and he drove down to Southern Cemetery here. He parked on the side of the busy road, actually on the main road, not here, right in the dual carriageway up there, and they walked inside a double hedge. He struck her on the head 11 times and he left her body hidden between the hedges and he went home to Bradford. Nothing happened. No messages, nothing in the papers, nobody found the body. He, was, he didn't like that, he was frustrated. And he came back, he came back a week later, he pulled Jean's body out of the hedge, he scattered her clothing all around, and using a broken uh, pane of glass from a nearby uh, glass house, he slashed her stomach and the limbs, and still he did all this with his car parked at the side of the road, just down the end there. Anyway, finally, with the body in bits and blood everywhere and clothes scattered around, somebody finally found the body and they um, started to uh, look around the scene for any clues and uh, whatever. Anyway, part of the uh, story that's of interest is that um, the person that found the body finally was a chap called Bruce Jones, and he finally he went on later in life. He was a taxi driver, and he played the part of Les Battersby in Coronation Street. <laughs> anyway, Jordan was buried very close to the spot she was discovered at, which is sort of just over on the corner, and this is the extensions of the cemetery. She's buried down in the corner there, and a chap at the cemetery here was telling me that. Um, they've got this list that you've got of famous burials. Anyway, the family have complained to him that she's not included in the list of famous burials, but he sort of declined to get into a debate about it. Anyway, there you go. That's me oh, finished with talking. Man. I'll go over to the cemetery, take you down to the main ones, and then you can go whichever way. Oh, Sit down. Sit down. Now then, as uh, the oldest living member of the Hardy family, <laughs> I think we all ought to say a great big thank you to Mandy and Dave. But um, when Mandy and Dave kept coming around to visit me when I had my broken arm, and there was these large boxes of chocolates, and I like this bit. Yes, <laughs> you were given, you were offered some chocolates. True. And Mandy said, "I don't usually let him have more than one." So, <laughs> so here's a small box of chocolates, and you, you may give her one. <laughs> Can we wait till later? It might be embarrassing. <laughs> I think we all ought to put our hands together and say thank you very much. Thank you, Mandy and Dave, and thank you to Darren. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm. Right. So, I'm going to, we bid our farewell to Darren here. So, say if you put your bits in your cars while we're in there, don't leave any valuables in. It's not too bad in daytime, but you know, it's not the, here, it's so not the safe. Oh, but Mandy's going to sit in the car, so she'll be keeping her eye open. Mandy's, Mandy, unfortunately, has done all this already. So. yards away and we didn't know that was there and so they put everything online and uh, we found it Go on. no angels <laughs> but considering it's not been tended there's a lot of good stuff there underneath I, d I dug with a spade yeah. and I think the plinth that was originally there yeah the flat bit sticking out you plinth, yeah, plinth flat, yeah. is there because you hit all along the edge yeah, you hit yeah. Something very hard. Yeah. So I'm either sort of chomping through his bones or I'm going through the um, marble. <laughs> that um, Robert Joseph Hardy 
uh, born 1832, and um, it's from him that pretty well the rest of the family derives, descends, and it was his son, John Thomas Hardy, who went over to Canada with his children, born here, and that uh, is one of those children which is the start of the Canadian branch and indeed the New Zealand branch, uh, descending from uh, well, we John Thomas know. Hardy. When are we going to meet them all? <laughs> well, it won't take long the way they're talking. <laughs> so, over the other side, and you can go. You get your shadow in, don't you? <laughs> no, that's not. Um, James was married twice. He was married to Rachel, had the children, and then Rachel died, and he married. He married again. Margaret, who he married, she was married three times, and but there was a con continuity because Robert Joseph, you know, was obviously part of the other families later on, and what have you. Now he's at school in Oldham, but you know, he appears in censuses with the the other family, with the Aldridge family. But, and they were all involved at that time in running pubs around the area. And even if the census is don't mention the packing business and that, it was obviously still going on. But you know, when you've got one person married again, the other one's had three husbands, it really does get a bit confusing. Um, I think if you're not into it as a hobby, they don't have definite reasons to get it around it. You know, you tend to stick to the only thing you can get to Not actually blood relations to anybody here today. Only through marriage, second marriage, but very much part. Yeah. Yeah, so she that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she didn't have any children by. That's what I'm saying, it wasn't, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's ours. Yeah. 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 Number 14 is really on Trish's side. Number nine is on everybody's side. And number nine that's in this section is Cecilia Catherine Moores, who Cecilia, who was Cecilia Catherine Hardy, who married Herbert Moore, and some uh, more recent family burials in that family actually. That's number 14 on your hymn sheet, as it were. And um, sorry, number nine, number nine on the uh, list. You'll notice that my mother's name is Elsa, and we were that worried about them calling the correct name in Elsa. That they put Maria Elsa, and we had to go and have them change, so the E is changed. Oh, is that why it's got a discoloration on the yes. thing? That's to fill in the A, and it's got an E in it. Oh, he was very really upset about that. Was a he was, he had to be a bit more reading. He always said that he was going to be a My mum always said she wanted to live to be 90 and a great granny, and she just did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Lee Dennis and Mabel Bell. Who's that? This is the uh, timpanies and this is well, Frank. Hang on from, now. Um, um, this is from Trisha's. Oh, Uncle side. Harry. He was Uncle Timpani. Harry, yeah, he's Timpani. Well, who's put that idiot thing there? I don't know. It was there yesterday. Yeah, it's probably been there for many years. They wouldn't move it. 
nasıl kuruyor var. So that's your grandma and grandfather and Harry. I took it. I took it away and I did a photograph of it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody moved. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to put those hideous things there, but it's not very nice. You'll get a better view of the... Uh, I don't know. That, uh, Uncle Frank was the. Yeah, I went through that yesterday. Who was the one who had the the shop in Birkenhead? I think that was Harry. Uncle, Uncle Harry. Harry. He's the one who ended up in the. I thought. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, I Max, Max took his own life, so that's how it, this is the non-conformist section. So, and that fell in with that because it wasn't a particular. You know, both you were atheists or something, and, or Freemason. When you think about Freemason, yeah, so they might not have wanted him in any of the other sleep from there, um, but yeah, it sweeps up others. <laughs> Not not many other stones like that for Jewish. I don't know. It's, it's quite a unique one, but it's pretty old. Mm, yeah, that's cool, isn't it? I was just staggered when we found it in that yeah. condition. And I mean, when would any family have last? Bit? And he's got these bits around the bottom there. Mm. They weren't up, so I haven't been clamped plinths across them. <laughs> He came from uh, Hamburg. Very, very um, distant and very tenuous links to Anne Frank in uh, Amsterdam, the Frank family. Sort of probably some sort of connection, but <laughs> there's a lot of Franks, let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very common They're Jewish from name. Germany anyway, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they actually came awesome. from Germany and Austria. And, yeah. But they, they, they came from, uh, from Hamburg. But the best story is on, on the relation, you know, to, I forget which one it is now, it's in some websites. And it. Oh, it was in the book, I think. And, it, and the, the, the one who, they were born in Bradford and um, they were in the cotton trade. They dealt with um, cotton waste, as it was called, but I think.